we're going to take this pump apart and rebuild it. This cover here that went over the PTO had a big crack in it across here, but I JB welded that <clears throat> and then uh, painted it. So <clears throat> that came out okay. So now I want to take this cone off and I'm just going to look and see if it's got oil in it and maybe even water. Just letting it drain down here. You know, I like just to, the smell of almost any kind of motor oil and grease, but this is not one of them. The oil that comes out of these things notoriously stinks. There's nothing good about it. Loosen all these hex screws. while I'm letting that drain in here. This is a little outer collar that really squeezes on the seal for the drive shaft. And this one needs to be replaced. It curled in on itself, leaks, which is why the inside of that <clears throat> is rusted where the splines are. So I'm gonna take that out and I'll have to replace that with a new one. Rubber O-ring will be replaced. To take this impeller out, you essentially chuck the bottom, the opposite side, got those two flat edges <clears throat> in a vise, a big vise, a little vise won't work. You, you'll end up breaking the vise. And then you, you need this impeller removal tool. It's like a $6 tool that once you get it, you don't ever want to lose it because there's really no other way to do this. You can put a drive shaft in here and use a pipe wrench, but you know, you may mess up a good drive shaft or if some people have used drive shafts that they use, but just get this tool that fits in there like this. Uh, these have Loctite in them. And many times you have to take a propane torch and heat up the impeller center to loosen up that Loctite, but we're gonna try it without it. You need a long cheater bar. These things are on here super tight. Give it another go here. So again, very important tool. There's just no other way to do that without messing something up. Here's our impeller. This is actually in very good shape. It just needs to be cleaned up along the edges. Uh, so that's good. That one's a slightly bent there, but I think that's fine. So, this is the wear ring. 
get this in here where you can see it inside here. We're gonna cut that out with a Sawzall. I'm gonna cut it in a couple of places just to relieve the pressure and then work it out. You don't need a very aggressive blade for this either. Um, in fact, the you know the less aggressive the better. This one might even be a little bit too aggressive if you can see that. But just take it slow and try not to beat up the back of the pump. And you don't want to cut all the way down into the case. Then just take a flat edge or something. Finish cutting down. You're trying to remove this piece in the middle so that the whole thing will relax and you can get it out. It's coming. It's not all the way cut through in the very bottom there because that, that was too close to the, the metal housing. And there it is. Got some wear in there. You know, uh, it's mainly the, the clearance between the impeller edges and this has to be about one millimeter. But because this is pretty scraped up in here, that would have created a little bit of turbulence and things like that. So just standard stuff to replace these. So before we put this impeller back in, we're going to clean it up a little bit on these edges. You know, you can feel they've got a couple of nicks and chips and bends in them. You never want to do anything with this though, because that's the edge that's going up against your your wear ring. We're just going <clears> to <throat> take an ordinary file here and smooth these out. We've got our parts in from uh, OSD Marine. These are all OEM parts, except for this. Uh, this is the, the new wear ring. You can see it looks a little bit different. This happens to be um, a plastic called Delrin, which is not OEM and somewhat controversial. Some people like them, some people don't. Uh, it's a more durable plastic, so they apparently uh, will last longer, less susceptible to break up and things like that. However, uh, sometimes due to manufacturing flaws, they can fit too loose or too tight. More on that in just a second. But normally, just I recommend going OEM. Um, this was just a calculated risk of something that I'm going to try. But if you get away from OEM, you start to have problems with things fitting <clears throat> and quality and things like that. Um, yeah, the things we got is we got our new little rubber boot, uh, that goes in here in the impeller, a new collar that holds that in place, two O-rings that go on uh, up against, they actually go on the nozzle part that's got two little nipples that fit into these holes here. That's for your build pickups, uh, rubber bumper that goes on the drive shaft more of that later you actually need two of those not one if you don't have those rubber bumpers in there your drive shaft's going to be slinging around back and forth inside your pump and then uh, just needed one o-ring for the cone here 
goes on there like that. The old one was actually fine, so I'm going to save it, but this actually had two O-rings in it, so what the heck, went ahead and got both of those. So, uh, normally, if these fit tight on your, you want to make sure the inside of your pump housing is pretty clean and, and uh, free of any pieces of chunks and glue and things like that. But if, you're, if your wear ring does fit tight, too tight, what you can do is let this sit out in the sun and warm up and put this in the freezer. And this will shrink a little bit and this will expand and then you can just slip it right in. Um, that's going to look like what I'm going to do here. But it turns out I didn't do either one of those things. And this actually fits pretty tight, but not that's pretty loose, actually. It's not so loose that it washes around in there. I can't really, if I really try hard, I can turn it just a little bit. Um, when they do fit tight, you just take something like a two by four and lay across it, take a, a hammer and just tap it in and it'll go in and then you don't have to do anything else. Because this one's fitting not as tight as I would like it to do, I don't want it to spin inside the pump. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of 3M5200, 3M5200 3M5 marine sealant just on the bottom edge of this and just around the top before I push it in. Not a lot, but just enough to hold that in place. And then more importantly, I'm going to put in set screws into the side that that sink not you know about halfway into the ring obviously not all the way through but just set screws that sink into it and that's not too unusual because these pumps for the 951s um, this one didn't but the later years uh, they they did have pumps that had those set screws in them so that's not an unusual thing to do here the other option of course would be to to send the ring back and try to get a different one that fit better or go back to OEM, but this doesn't fit that loose where I'm not going to go through all of that stuff. It, it fits tight enough to work with, so we're just going to go with that. Um, once that's sort of in there, I'm just going to check fit the impeller, so I'm going to drop the impeller down in here, and you want it to fit pretty tight. You know, there's supposed to be less than a millimeter clearance between the the edges of the impeller and the inside wall of this wear ring, but that fits, uh, that fits real good in there. Um, sometimes these can fit, uh, really tight, which is okay. That's normal. And if they do fit tight, what you can do is, uh, you can either take a drill and take your, uh, I don't have it with me, your impeller tool, and you can literally let it carve into the wear ring. That's normal. Or what some people do, put it on the ski, but don't bolt the housing all the way down to the plate. Uh, leave it just a little bit loose. Start the engine, let it idle. And then gently, you know, kind of systematically, incrementally tighten it back up. And the impeller will make its own way and it'll carve itself into the wear ring. And that's perfectly fine. And a common thing that people do. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to take all this out and I'm going to tap these holes, drill some holes, tap them and put these uh, set screws in. Drilled these holes out. There's three of them. And then I'm just going to put this tap in. like this. This is plastic, so I want to be real careful I don't make the hole too big. I'm just going to barely turn it through. Like that. Then we're going to take our stainless steel set screw. Put it in here like this. Fits pretty snug. 
and just when it goes down to the surface, I want to see how far it protrudes. That looks pretty good. It just has to be thinner than the wear ring. This is an indicator here that I have set up because I'm going to mark these spots where I need to drill a little recess in the ring, not all the way through, but enough where I can have the set screw penetrate into it a little bit. But I got to mark the exact spot so when I put it back in there, it's going to be set. There's my places. I actually drilled these on a drill press so I could control the depth. So now I'm going to line up my marks. I'm going to slide it in. This is just a test fit. Like that. And the holes match up perfectly. So I'm going to, it's here where you can see it, I can feel it's a little snug, a little snug, then right about there, it gets, gets tight right about there, and I don't want to, I don't want to tighten these too much because you don't want to push the ring in or it's going to hit your impeller. The idea is not to squeeze it, it's to keep it from slipping. So I'll put Loctite in this and I'll probably back it out just a little bit so that won't happen. I'm going to put just a little bit of 5200 sealant just around this inside edge there. Normally you wouldn't do this on a, uh, on a pump that actually fit tight like it's supposed to. But this one, I don't want it to slip, but I don't want it to be a real pain in the neck to get out for me or the next person that has to do with this deal with taking the wear ring out. So just a very, very small thing here. Like that, nothing, no big deal. Line up my indicators again. Make sure this is facing right side up, which I guess it would be because the, otherwise the indicator would be there. Now, before I put this down, I'm going to also put a very small bit of this on the outside so that when I push it down, it's going to have a little bit of a squeeze out. I am then going to press into the little gap that. 
then I'm going to go ahead and push it straight down and seat it. Clean that up. Okay, very happy with how that came out. You know, just a little little bit in the the little seam there. Okay, now we're gonna put our set screws in, and I'm gonna put just a little bit of Loctite on this. Whoops, god damn it. These things are small to work with. Just want it to make contact, which is right about there. Got all of those in. Now we're going to do a little test fit. Make sure we haven't accidentally screwed those in too tight. We have not. That looks okay. So now we're going to let that dry. Now we're going to <clears throat> put the shaft back in it. We're going to put the shaft to the pump. So we're going to put a little bit of... It would help if I would cut the end of this off. But I'm going to put a little bit down in here. And around that. There's not much in these bottles, so you don't want to... <clears throat> waste it. Then the thrust washer goes on. This is the thrust bearing. You put oil on both sides of this. Like that. So with any luck, I'm going to slip this down in here very carefully. And hopefully we won't need any special tools. There we go. Went right through. So the shaft is in. So now what we're going to do is we're going to chuck it in this vise just like we did when we took it off. i got to be careful, though, so that this doesn't come out or it'll slide right back out. Okay, I'm going to tighten this down super tight because we're going to really put the torque on it coming down. By the way, I forgot to mention I did not replace the bearings on this because I didn't need to. So... Um, it had oil in it when we took it apart. The oil was not milky, which means there was no water intrusion. There was no signs of any kind of metal shavings or debris in there. No reason to believe the bearing was failing. <clears throat> and there was no side-to-side -side play with the impeller and the shaft. There's up and down play, but that's normal. You want that, actually. But because there was no side-to-side -side play and there's no real evidence that, that the bearings needed to be replaced, I'm not going to... I decided not to touch them. This is a personal decision. Some people um, want to replace the bearings anytime they replace the wear rings. That's perfectly fine. Um, I didn't do it. It's more work. you got to buy a bearing. you got to press them out. 
all of that kind of stuff. So I'm just making a calculated risk here that I, I'm not going to need it. But I take my pumps off every year, at least once a season, change the oil in them, inspect them, and things like that. So uh, I'm just going to go with what I have right now. But if you're so inclined, you can replace the bearings. It's not that hard to do. For this, the next thing that we're going to do is put you up here where you can see it. So we've got to put Loctite, the red stuff, um, the permanent Loctite on it, and not the blue stuff. Well, I messed up, and you missed the part about uh, I put the, th the red Loctite on it, twisted the impeller down. <clears throat> you you want it to make sure you don't cross thread those threads so get it started very carefully spin it down all the way uh, the impeller may fit tight inside the wear ring and that's fine you actually want that to happen the engine when the ski's running it's going to carve its way in there anyway and as I said earlier you can either put the pump on loose on the back of the ski and start the engine, let it idle, and then tighten it up and uh, let it carve its way in there. Or you can take a, a drill <coughs> and spin it in there too. But one way or the other, you want it to fit tight. So now we've got all that in there and we need to torque it down to 70 Newton meters. right there and that takes care of that so now what I'm gonna do we're gonna put this cone back on This is just to keep the ring from twisting up when you put it in there. They can do that. Like this. And then we put our screws in, see how it popped back up? That's fine, that's that spring in there that's working. So you gotta push it down and then put the screws in. Gotta find the screws first though. On these, you wanna use blue Loctite 243 so that they don't back out, but because you're replacing these a lot open it up. You don't want it to be permanent. Get those started. And then the final step here is to fill this up. Oh, you know what? snap I did this uh, did this I put this cone on the wrong way it needs to spin around because the filler needs to be pointed up so I'm gonna replace that redo this okay back in business flip that around now the filler filler plug is facing up like it should be and we're gonna fill this with oil you don't have to fill it chug full. You just want it to be up to the very bottom of that, that hole. Just have to snug it. Don't over tighten it or you'll just go all the way through the bottom into it. Okay, so last thing we need to do is we've got to put our little doohickeys 
on the bottom. We're replacing this thing. It's a little rubber boot. And we've got our new ones here somewhere. Here they are. The two pieces. Got that piece. And got this collar that snaps around it and holds it tight. Really important to replace these because that's what seals your splines for your drive shaft. Synthetic grease. I'm pretty sure this thing's going <clears> to <throat> have to be wrestled in. I'll try it. May have to stop the video, though. It's going to be slippery with this grease. Yeah, about what I figured. Get in there. Okay. That wasn't too bad. Clean that off. Make sure it doesn't have any kinks in it. Then where's our new collar? This goes on top of that. <clears throat> and there you go. Ready to go back on. In addition to the pump, I also worked on these, the steering nozzle here, the three-part aluminum piece, got up and down and side to side motion. And uh, it was pretty scratched up all the way down to the aluminum, like it had been run over rocks and things like that. So I uh, went after it with a scraper and a wire brush and sandpaper and cleaned all that up, primed it and painted it with this phantom black epoxy paint from mercury which is really good stuff it's a little expensive i think it was something like 20 bucks a can um, but a little goes a long way but it really really turned out great pretty happy with that so this finishes up this part of the project a lot more to go but stay tuned for another episode, and as always, thanks for watching.